and today I'm going to talk about the 320 Grenade Launcher by HK. Your grenade launcher has been well received by many militaries across the world. Just ask the U.S. Army. What do you think? They're great! There are three main ways to use the 320 grenade launcher. There is use with a bus stock to use a standalone system, use as an underbarrel grenade launcher, or the pirate pistol technique. When you use a standalone system, the 320, with its buttstock is not in fact meant to be used like a traditional rifle, but to be placed in the center of your chest using your dominant eye with the iron sight to make an angle, and the actual length of it is so that you can rotate it while pressing against your chest. The different angles get you various ranges. Now, the front, front foregrip is to keep your uh, fingies away from the actual breech. When used in the uh, underbarrel configuration, instead of using the long buttstock, you're using the buttstock of your rifle much in the same manner as you were the previous buttstock. So instead of having it on your shoulder, it is now in the center of your chest, and you're still doing that same angling type motion. And while it may be uncomfortable without armor, usually when you have armor and gear, uh, you really don't mind. You can always just kind of adjust the buttstock to where it needs to be. And now your what used to be your support hand is now your trigger hand. And you're able to manipulate safety on both sides with your thumb, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's also good to uh, have these iron sights on the right hand side. One, so you can use it when it's in your chest with your right eye if you're uh, right eye dominant. But two, so if you're also a right hander, when you have your rifle hanging around and banging on stuff, you're not going to have your iron sight uh, getting caught on you as these are plastic and they can break off real easily, especially if they were on your on your left side of your rifle as a right-handed shooter. But shoot with it as an underslung grenade launcher, place it in the center of your chest, and just like before, you line it with your right eye. Without the buttstock, it's kind of like a uh, heavy recoiling flare gun. So just pulse in, and just find your range, pulse in. Den Rest meiner Tage bleib ich dort Dort bei dem Haus abendrot. Ready move fire. That's it. Oh, that's it. Oh! What was that, sir? You Damn aiming it. Or... What'd you aim at? What, what was uh, it? Was just, just shy of 200. Right, just, just shy of 200. So, 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 put it over. That's at two. Okay, yeah, that's right two. two. It's going to be right at two. You just so, got it over. Get that money here. Get it. Hit. Oh! Fuck oh! 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 Get fucked! <laughs> <laughs> That was on the fucking money for shit! Nice. Woo! Now we'll take a closer look at the launcher itself, starting with the controls. There is an HK paddle safety right here, and it's just safe and fire. 
It is ambextrous, so this paddle is on both sides. We have a trigger. This trigger is double action, and it is um, about the same as a flare gun trigger. So it's just, is right now it's unsafe, so it can't be pressed on fire. It is a heavy trigger. And also in the trigger well is the actual barrel release. So if you depress it, the barrel will come out to the left hand side, at which point you'll be able to track around. There is no extractor in this system, so you use your hand. And to close it, just push it back into place, and it's going to lock with a lever, which is attached to this button. In the rear, we have a pressure switch for use with the thumb. Uh, this one has been cut due to uh, either damage or uh, a soldier just not knowing what it is and cutting it so it's out of the way. And it goes into this plastic housing which is screwed onto the chassis. This wire goes up and it would have a little outlet right here uh, for use with an automatic uh, laser rangefinder that we do not commonly use because they are big, heavy, and bulky and slightly inaccurate. This plate can be removed, but most of the time it is not. It is just held on by two hex screws. Uh, the iron sight can be swapped over here if needed, but it is often left on the right hand side due to whenever it is mounted on a, um, onto a rifle. On the bottom, we have a series of Picatinny rails that are also built into the chassis. The foregrip is screwed in with two Allen keys and also held in place by the uh, by these little slots in the picatinny rail. Uh, this lever on the back is to use the buttstock and adjust the length of pull and or remove the buttstock. Alright, so this whole groove is measured for uh, picatinny rails. It's got screw holes all over the place for various different weapon platforms. Right now it is set up for an M4 and that's what this little attachment right here is just specified for an M4 and that goes onto the bayonet lug. So you can take this off and put it onto uh, G36s and any other type of weapon that might need to be mounted due to contracts. And we have two sling points in the front and those pair up with the sling point on the back of the bus stop. Now we'll take a look inside. So all you gotta do is press this button. Take a look inside. We can see that it is in fact rifled. This rifling is used one to stabilize the round and then certain rounds need the actual rotation in order to disengage safeties. Many of our explosive fragmentation rounds need to disengage safeties through the use of centrifugal force in order to be activated at certain distances. This uh, prevents soldiers from building themselves up by being into the ground and blowing out the small portion of their squad. Here we can see the actual firing pin. Even though there's five holes, only the center hole actually has any protrusions that will come through and that's where the firing pin comes through. Uh, it moves a little bit too fast for me to be able to capture on this camera, but that is uh, just a spring-loaded firing pin that pops in and then it pushes back due to a second spring. On the opposite side you have the spring that's actually providing power to push the barrel off the side and it is getting caught on a little nub on the barrel and a pin. Uh, this hole right here contains that pin and it is getting caught on this little wedge. Usually there is a rubber buffer right here to prevent it from uh, slapping the aluminum nub. Unfortunately, that rubber buffer is now missing, and so over time that will cause damage.